Uh, Mr. Chairman, when I began to think of what I would say about lessons learned uh, from the tragedy of the 1914, uh, I asked myself, why European tragedy? First World War was a war tragedy. It was indeed a bigger tragedy for our part of the world than it was perhaps for Europe. The Arab world, uh, immediately after uh, the end of the uh, First World War, was devastated, totally devastated. But uh, I will come to this. I just want to make another remark. Uh, another question I was asking myself coming here when we talk about the Middle East. What do we mean by the Middle East? In the mind of the majority of the people, the Middle East is the Arab countries in Asia, basically, and some in North Africa. And perhaps we underestimate, I wouldn't say that we forget, sometimes we overlook the fact that two-thirds of the Arabs are in Africa. In fact, perhaps one-third of the African territory is Arab. If you take it from Mauritania all the way to Somalia, the whole of North Africa. There are today almost 300 million Africans whose countries are members of the Arab League. So I would say, I hope that we can reach the time when we can talk about the Afro-Arab world, or the Arab-Afro world, because also the impact of what's happening in Africa today, as the impact of what's happening in the Middle East and what happened in the past is tremendous on both sides. We cannot talk, for instance, about security today in the Middle East without talking about what's happening in the Red Sea, what's happening in the Sahel, Al-Qaeda now is stretching out all the way from Mali, from uh, Boko Haram, from uh, the uh, Central African Republic, to what's happening elsewhere in Libya and perhaps in some part, other parts of the Arab world. This is, I just wanted to make this remark because it's, in my view, very important uh, to address uh, the subject of lessons. I'm going to be very brief because this is a subject which can take us to talk about uh, uh, the sub-issues like the Arab-Israeli issue. It's just one sub-issue of the bigger uh, Middle Eastern issue. I think the first lesson we have learned from the First World War was to mistrust the West and the East because both, they sat down in Versailles in 1918 and with paper and pen, they sat and they divided. They, they cut as they tailored their world of the aftermath of the First World War. The whole, the whole colonial setup came after the Second World War. Secondly, there was talking about Israeli-Arab conflict. 1917 was the Belfort Declaration, which set the basics of the foundation of Israel, but also implicitly, perhaps without uh, having that in mind, set the path for the, dis the dispersion of the Palestinians which is, for the Arabs, by and large, is the tragedy we were talking about earlier. The First World War resulted fundamentally on the disappearance of the Ottoman Khalifa, Khilaf. In other words, it, broke, it was the end of the Khilafa Islamiyah in history. It was the end. In other words, the imperial ship, 
of power wise, of ideology, which was then Islam, disappeared. And a new ideology of another imperial ideology began, which is the Soviet, the communist, the spread of communism, the Bolshevik revolution, and the colonial imperial uh, era we have known, you know. And finally, I would say, one outcome of the First World War, which was disastrous, is the Holocaust. It started way back. The Nazi movement and the, the way it massacred six million Jews just because they are Jewish, uh, I take it as a fundamental uh, uh, point in that process of what has happened after the First World War and, of course, the Second World War and thereafter. I would say the second element, the a lesson we learned from the First uh, World War was the spirit of alienation which prevailed in many parts of the world, particularly in the Middle East, which we are, of which we are suffering today, even in Africa. Sheikh uh, Tijan, before you came, I spoke on your behalf, insisting that we cannot talk about the Arab world and the Middle East without Africa, and vice versa. Thank you very much. Uh, both the African part of the Middle East, I would call it, and the Asian part of the Middle East suffer from this alienation. Some take it from, in a way, easily because it's a cultural thing. It's not. Because one of the results of this mistrust that I was talking about was the repression of which suffered millions of people being colonized. The their dignity was hurt, and their fundamental basics of their thinking lost identity. I think no one can, and perhaps it, many of you, particularly in Europe, do not see it, but we are living a very big crisis today. They call it a crisis of education. It is a crisis of identity. In our families, our children do not speak one, one language at once. In fact, some have forgotten their mother tongue. We are today uh, devastated. It, 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 in other words, even in what we want, our choices are conditioned naturally by our knowledge. And our knowledge is fuzzy. When one asks himself or herself, who am I, I wonder who really has the right answer. Many, I would say, a generation today, they do not have a depth of their knowledge of the self which goes beyond, let's say, 30, 40 years. And uh, this is an issue which is rarely raised. Yesterday, when Dr. Clark and uh, his colleagues here, they were talking about the second, the First World War, none of them has spoken about the cultural dimension of what has happened. We talk about economics, about energy, about oil, about territory, about this, but what has happened to human beings? I uh, believe that uh, In, in the process of what has happened after the First World War, we uh, are faced as a result of what someone yesterday called it the management of diversity. We cannot manage our diversities today even national diversities. This is something that took place way back 
in 1918 at Versailles. 80 years ago, 90 years ago is not too long. In fact, uh, some people who were born in 1918 or 20, they're still alive. And finally, I would uh, like to end by saying that the second, the First World War taught us or focused, they made us focus on the fact that the period of colonization that Africa and the Arab world, the Middle East, have known marked the uh, building of good infrastructure. Many African countries, the Middle East countries, did not have electricity, did not have water, no railroads, highways, all that was built. But that resulted also in the birth of the alienation. I was just telling Miguel Angel this morning, we're having breakfast, that when France and Spain left Morocco in 1956, we had not a single college no university. In fact, the Spanish part limited high school for Moroccans to only four years. And the maximum that my generation could get in northern Morocco, because I come from the part which was uh, under Spanish administration, I wouldn't say colonialism, Miguel Angel. My generation, the utmost that could look for was to be a teacher, primary school teacher, or uh, a post uh, uh, master, you know. I, I, I say it seriously. And I had to leave Morocco at the age of 16 to go to Egypt to be able to have my baccalaureate, to, have, to, f to finish my high school. That's what brought me to go to Egypt. So this is what I really meant by the alienation. And I consider this is something that we have learned. I hope our children can be better than us to overcome this uh, very tragic situation. And I do not mean by that that we have to come back to ourselves, to any national closeness. What I mean is to work with the world with us full, like the other. Thank you, sir. Thank you.